Hello, everybody, and welcome to the best annual meeting ever. <laughs> this is a great innovation. Thank you, Don Blanchard, and everyone who had this great idea. Thank you to the fellowship committee for organizing and making it all possible. And thank you to everyone who brought the news, and thank you to everyone who's here. Um, I call to order the 2024 annual meeting of Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ. Reverend Jennings, would you lead us in the convening prayer? I will. Yeah. I would just like to um, invite you all just to take a deep breath. And really bring your attention to where you are right now. So you're in this room or online. Bring your awareness to this community, our connections with one another. Our connection with the divine. Our mission to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world. And our intention to bring kindness to everything we do. Amen. I'm not really much of a remark. Do you ever so I'll keep this brief? Um, just thank you to everyone on the leadership team who was part of um, all of the work that we did in the church over the past year. It's been an honor to serve you, and I really look forward to handing off the time to incoming lay leaders. And thank you so much to everyone who's stepping up to serve in the year to come. We are a congregational church. It takes the congregation to make the church. Um, so thank you to all lay leaders and future. Um, so the first order of business is approval of the 2023 annual meeting minutes. Um, you should have gotten a copy of this in advance and had a chance to read through. Does anybody have any changes or additions or corrections to last year's annual meeting minutes? Do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes okay. of last year? Yeah. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is passed and the meeting minutes are approved. Um, and so we have, especially beaming in from, are you in Italy, Tom? Someplace exciting, I hope. The treasurer's report um, and budget and assistance fund items um, Don Marshall. I think he's in his den. Oh, <laughs> in his own den. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Buenos noches de Mexico. Oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, I heard there was to be some good wine there, and the wine in Mexico is not particularly great. Um, <laughs> But they do have very good mezcal. So. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I wish I could uh, be with you all, but um, I am enjoying myself uh, a little further, further south. Um, so let's, um, let's get into the financial report. I'm going to put up a presentation. Give me a second. Bear with me. Who's there? Well, so there's... Is this anybody's coffee? It's still warm. Coffee in it, or would you like it to be your coffee? <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, folks. We just tested it and it was working, and now I can't. It's not working. So. One second. Uh, we've all got hard copies here. Yeah, this is slightly different. Um, 
But uh, let, me, let me do it this way. Um, Sorry, guys. Project. All right. Are we doing it? Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, so this is the financial report. We're going to start with uh, uh, 2023. Um, uh, just take a quick look at the year in review. Um, just as a general um, comment, our financial position remains uh, strong. Uh, in 2023, our overall income exceeded budget by about 11 percent, um, and um, and pledge income came in um, actually significantly higher than what we had budgeted, which which is fantastic. We almost always meet um, our pledges. People do what they say they're going to do, which which is fantastic um, and a, a great commentary on our congregation. Um, our income was boosted uh, in 2023 in a few different ways. Uh, one is that we had 22,000 in, in memorial donations, um, and, um, and, and those memorial donations are unbudgeted. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we had 22,000 there, and we had about 22,000 in general contributions, and we typically see about you know six to eight thousand in general contributions. One reason was uh, was just a particular members. Uh, generosity um, and uh, sort of a one-time thing. So uh, so that's boosted that line a bit. Um, we also uh, carried over almost $20,000 from the 2022 surplus, um, which at the time when we were putting together the 2023 budget we needed to do in order to balance the budget. Uh, and then looking at uh, just our expenses, 4% uh, less than budget, which is terrific. We had some savings in the buildings and ground area, repairs and maintenance, and under uh, the music uh, line. So overall, our income exceeded expenses by about 56,000. Um, now that translates into an actual budget surplus of 34,000 because we don't count memorial donations and bequests in the surplus because they're unbudgeted. So a good chunk of that excess was driven by that unexpected income that I just mentioned, the memorial donations uh, and general uh, income or miscellaneous income, I should say. Um, so the, um, the year obviously um, ended in, in a strong position um, uh, with a surplus uh, um, and um, that has put us in, in also in a very strong cash position. We have about $273,000 uh, in our um, bank account. Um, one thing to note that may differ from the documents you have in front of you because those are as of 1231. Uh, this is as of today, or as of a couple of days ago anyway. Um, the, the significant increase over 1231 is that we've had a bunch of new uh, payments to people's uh, uh, capital campaign pledge um, that have to our cash position. And uh, so that means uh, right now we have about 173,000 of our cash position is uh, capital campaign funds. And just to quickly move down on the investments, um, we have uh, about a total of just under $400,000 in our four investment funds. The investment funds have done well this year as the stock market has done well. So, um, you know, that's another area where uh, we're seeing strength. One thing I would just quickly note um, is, is a, there's a correction that needs to be made on, on our assets page in the um, annual report financials. We show the Wall Street Garden Fund having 4,800 in it. Uh, that's that should not be, that money has been spent. In fact, the 4,800 should be in the Georgie uh, Dunham Fund. Um, and uh, that fund we're changing to be the Georgie Dunham Memorial Garden Fund. So that's clarification and a fixing of an error in that report. Um, I just wanted to call out. Any questions on the uh, 2023 financials? I have a question. Mary Jane has a question. Yeah. I have a question, John. Um, 
I don't know. Are you planning to make a transfer from uh, a budgeted transfer into the contingency fund, or uh, in some years that that's what you uh, the treasurer does? I didn't know if you were planning to do it for 2023. So we do a. Um... We have the 2023 budget. You should see uh, a three thousand dollar budget line. Um, I believe it's on the buildings and grounds. Uh, the what? What? Uh, so there's a three thousand dollar transfer that we budgeted the last few years. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And Don, if if it's okay, I just for for those who may not be aware of this, um, the pastoral housing fund doesn't have anything to do with your current pastor, um, who got this job when she had a house in the D.C. area. Um, but in the future, if um, this church were to call a pastor from another area, in order for them to be able to afford to settle in D.C., they would probably need some assistance. So that's why that fund is there. Yes, and the you know what we want to do with those funds uh, and how we you know to to Mary Jane's point we transfer thousand dollars is what we budgeted but we will sometimes transfer excess cash into those funds that's a a, a matter of what the trustees take up and I think Don Blanchon will be talking about that a little bit more later. Um, as we get into um, the capital campaign stuff. Any other uh, questions on 2023? Great. All right, let's uh, take a look at, oh, well, <laughs> this is just a, and, and again, Don Blanchard is gonna spend a lot more time looking at the capital campaign financials, but um, we currently sold, um, for the capital campaign 772,000 in total income and 690 in expenses, about 82,000 um, uh, that positive. Now that figure differs from the 173,000 that I mentioned is in our bank account that belongs to uh, the capital campaign because there's about $91,000 in our general fund um, that was money that was transferred from investment funds to the general fund for the purpose of uh, the capital campaign, but has not been spent. So that's why there's about 173 total uh, of capital campaign funds in the general fund. I think I probably completely confused everyone, so we will move on. <laughs> um, uh, looking at the 2024 budget, uh, we are looking at total expenses of about five and a half, uh, five, almost six percent above our what our 2023 actual expenses were, and um, we're seeing you know that increase is largely driven by um, another staff, another cola increase that is slightly larger than usual, but not nearly as high as the cola increases we've seen uh, in previous several years. Our insurance costs continue um, to go up, and I think this year uh, we're seeing an eight, eight or ten percent increase in our insurance premiums. They've almost doubled in the last five years. Um, it, it's it's been a, you know, a real pain point for us. Um, something that has not been uh, a pain point for us the last several years is our um, natural gas costs because we entered into a contract several years ago that that locked us into a rate that ended up being fantastic um, as natural gas got more expensive. But then that contract ended and now we had to uh, go into another contract or we did go into another contract in which our rates is about 30% higher than what we had been paying. So we're seeing increases in those areas and, and you know, this comes after, as I mentioned, uh, years, several years of increases uh, inflation. Uh, uh, I, just did, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Did you say natural gas costs are 33 0% higher? That's roughly um, based on my quick look of it. It's it's 30% higher per therm. 
Um, I, I don't know that that will translate directly into 30% higher bills, assuming the same amount of usage. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't fully understand how those things are calculated quite well enough, but we're going to be discussing that and, and getting a handle on it. We did increase our budget line for natural gas, recognizing that we are going to be paying higher prices. So that's, the, that's my not very clear explanation. Um, our total income is um, budgeted at 396,000. Um, and that's about five and a half percent higher than our 2023 budget when you exclude the $19,000 that we carried over. Um, of that, we, got, we, we have 300,519 in pledge income. Um, and I wanna take a second to talk about that. We had set a goal of $308,000 uh, for pledge income. Uh, as part of our stewardship campaign, and um, recognizing that that was a a, a reach, um, but it was what the amount we needed uh, to cover the expenses. Um, it's the, one of the largest asks we've made of this congregation, if not the largest ask we've made of this congregation, and um, we didn't we didn't get there. But we raised an amount of money or, or raised a pledge uh, amount that is higher than anything we've ever gotten pledges for in the past. It's a number that's higher than anything else. Uh, and, and it's very impressive. Um, so while we didn't quite get to our goal, um, and, and thanks to thanks to everyone. I mean, this was because people stepped up and, and heard our message that where our expenses are are getting uh, higher um, and that we wanna be able to take care of our staff. We wanna be able to have a full-fledged music program. We wanna be able to have a full-fledged children and youth program um, and doing those things is getting more expensive. Um, and, um, and, 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 you know, special thanks to Callie McCarthy who, uh, who led our stewardship effort um, along with Heidi Moon, um, it was a it was a great uh, effort by the team. Um, one other thing to note about our income is, um, is we have a four percent um, increase every year in Kinder House rent, so that kind of helps uh, uh, boost our income a little bit. Every year. Um, so the, the 2024 budget shows a net loss of about uh, a little over 8,000. Um, uh, I was trying to interject. Sorry, I, I just want to make sure that we're, for people who are new, that we're always explaining our terms. Kinder House is the daycare that rents from us downstairs. Yep. Yes, and, and about uh, maybe was it three years ago? Now the last two years we've had, been under a new contract that um, uh, that Don Blanchon um, negotiated with them that has a as i mentioned a four percent annual uh lift in the their uh their run payment so that's uh that's a nice change for us so i um, mentioned about an 80, 8100 uh, net loss that we're showing for the 2024 budget um it's not an immediate concern given that we are in a strong position financially in our cash and <laughs> Um, but, but it is something we need to think about in terms of future budgets. Uh, we, as I mentioned, uh, had we raised 308,000 in pledges, we would have a balanced budget. Um, not an immediate concern. The worst of inflation is probably over, um, but we are going to continue seeing increased costs uh, going forward. And we really have very little ability to affect our non-pledge income. Um, you know, we we are thinking creatively about uh, facility usage and how we can maximize that, and we have you know a fair bit of income there. We want to talk more about how we can uh, look at um, encouraging other forms of giving, bequests, and that type of thing. Um, but there really is very little you know that we can do to directly boost parts of our um, income line, except for the pledge. And the really are very areas that we can cut without without sacrificing some things that you know uh, I think we all uh, desire, <laughs> and the things I mentioned before, children and youth, music, and and those sorts of things. So we just have to you know, think about this going forward. It's 
the status quo of keeping things as they are is going to require most certainly higher individual income, individual giving. Uh, um, so that is just my uh, my final message on the uh, on the 2024. Uh, budgeting and budgeting will be continuing to come to the congregation, most likely to ask for uh, for increases in the, in the coming years. Uh, questions about the 2024 budget? I would just add, Don, that uh, another way to increase our income would be to increase membership. Yes. Thank you, Robert. That That actually is a very important point um and it's something that i know it's not doesn't fall fall under the um purview of the financial team but it's something <laughs> but if you like our congregation don't hesitate to tell your friends <laughs> or social media yeah there you go <laughs> google yeah. yeah we have our finger in every pot <laughs> Other questions or comments? Great. Uh, you're you're an easy crowd. Thank you. Thank you, Don. It's a huge job. Moving on. I have one more agenda item, but it's um, in a, if it's in a different direction. So um, if we could um, have a motion to approve the 2024 budget. Motion to approve the 2024 budget <coughs> presented by Don. So moved. I second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. John, those were uh, moved by Robert and seconded by Carol. <coughs> Rogers. Rogers, sorry. Great. Thank you, everyone. Okay, um, my next agenda item is um, we have been discussing for a little while the creation of a benevolence fund or assistance fund. We find the term assistance fund to be um, a little more to our liking, so that's what we've decided to, to call it. Um, and we had a small group involving myself and Pastor Ellen and the Mission and Social Action Chairs um, to got together to discuss this and to come up with a plan for a fund. <laughs> that plan was then um, put before the council and approved by the council. Um, and we now want to bring it to the full congregation and uh, and then uh, get y'all's uh, input and approval should you choose to do that. Let me uh, run it down. The, the full document is in your materials, but um, I can uh, give you the overview and then uh, happy to take any questions. The idea behind it is that the Mission and Social Action Committee has been giving out grants to individuals who request them for some time. It's been part of what they do. Um, and our thought was that we wanted to formalize that um, for a couple of reasons. One is that um, it creates more transparency uh, and more oversight and an ability for everyone to understand what, who, who's, you know, what kind of uh, resources you can put into this. <clears throat> and, um, and it just, it formalizes it as something that is uh, an actual offering that we are putting out there to the community. It also allows individuals to contribute to the fund and deduct that from their taxes. It would be a tax-free contribution if you, uh, donate to the fund. So, you know, we have had efforts to raise money for various individuals in which we've paid them directly. Those are not tax deductible contributions. This, you could contribute to this fund um, and it would be tax deductible. And then the fund would dole out money to people who are in need. The, the sort of terms we came up with around it is that there would be a $2,000 lifetime limit per individual or family um, requesting it. And that request could be one single request. It could be multiple requests over multiple years. Should someone request more than that, should they meet the $2,000 maximum and then need more, then it would be a question that would move to the, um, the leadership team. Um, so there is an opportunity if someone needed it. We don't expect this to be the case, but 
that is something that's a good option. What we have, um, laid out is that there, uh, an assistant fund committee is being created or would be cr created and it would involve the, uh, the pastor, uh, the mission and social action committee chair, the clerk and the immediate past moderator. The pastor would serve a non-voting role. And then anyone requesting a, a grant, that request would initially go through Pastor Ellen. Um, she would collect information from the person um, about their need. And one thing I should mention, this is we are um, not requesting people to prove that they have a financial need, but, um, but we are requesting information about their financial need um, as the fund may have can, may have limited funds to give out. And so that could be a factor. Um, Pastor Ellen would collect that information, would distribute it to the fund committee. And then with the unanimous vote of the committee, the fund, uh, the grant would be approved. We would give the money um, directly to the party or entity with whom the requester uh, owes payment, if unless that's not practical, um, but that's the goal. That would be always be the operating condition um, that we'd want to give the money to the landlord or whoever is in their are own. Uh, Mission and Social Action Committee will keep records of dis disbursements um, and will also publish uh, those disbursements on the church, church cloud drive. So there's transparency around it. It would be anonymous. Obviously, we're not going to list the names of people who are given money to, um, but we would know um, which part that, that individual parties are getting a certain amount of money. Financial support the fund would come from um, the Mission and Social Action Committee and then from individual donors. As I mentioned, this is a way for church members to be able to give um, in support of the community and support of individuals who need help. So we would probably have some fundraising efforts um, in the congregation as we go forward. The, this the fundraising would be managed by the Assistance Fund Committee. Uh, as I mentioned, fund donations to be tax deductible. They also cannot be earmarked. So someone, an individual can't give money to the fund and say, I'd like it to be used for this person. Um, and uh, the, if you give money to the fund, you're leaving it to the discretion of the committee to decide how the money gets used. So that's the basic overview. Um, I'm happy to take questions or, you know, others have worked on this. If they want to weigh in on, on, on what this all means, happy to. Uh, Don, one quick question. Uh, this is being seeded with a certain amount of money. I've forgotten what, it, what the amount is. What happens if you get requests that exceed what we actually have in that fund? Well, so that would be up to the um, the assistance fund committee. The, the seed money that you mentioned, the uh, Mission and Social Action Committee took what was essentially leftover funds from 2023 of about 2,800 um, to put an initial deposit into the uh, into the system. So it right now has about 2,800. In, in the document we lay out, we, we say that the committee will strive to keep a balance of about $5,000 in, in the fund. So we have a decent amount of available at any given time. If, if that money runs out or if there are multiple requests, then the committee just have to decide how to handle that. Don, I can add to that. Um, there, first of all, um, aside from one individual, um, and of course, as you can see, we have a two thousand dollar lifetime limit. You know, unless you know that's appealed and we decide differently. Um, but um, we have not actually um, ever, in any given year, aside from that one individual, um, faced a situation that would deplete those funds. And, um, but it is fair to say that we will have to, you know, sort of um, at, at intervals during the year come to the congregation and invite people to make a tax deductible contribution to the assistance fund so that we're not taking funds out of mission and social action, which would remove them from the organizations that our congregation chooses to support. Don, I was just wondering if you're going to index it with the inflation because like 2000 lifetime max today, you know, 20 years from now might be something different or is this sort of a pilot project and then it's 2000, you know, just I was just wondering about the long term vision of that dollar amount and also just the, the assistance fund in general. 
Yeah, that's a great, it's a great point. Um, and frankly, it's one that I don't think we've actually asked ourselves or I, that I've heard during our development of this. So I, I would say this, this is slightly more than a pilot project, but we also recognized that um, we've never done this before. And so that we're almost certainly gonna be making changes to it as we go forward, because we're gonna learn in the first year particularly. Um, and so I think that's something that I will note and the assistance fund committee should note and that we can, after we kind of do a view of this in the first year, we should uh, we should look at what whether that needs to change. Carol, Catherine, uh, a couple of things. First, I'm delighted to see that we are doing this. I think it's really important for us to institutionalize this process. So thank you all for doing it. Uh, will there be a designated line on our donate page so that we can go online and donate directly? Ooh, great idea. I'll add that. I'm, I'm John. On the donate page. <laughs> thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. So I wanted this actually important. I wanted to cover. Uh, to tell people, how do I give money to this fund? Well, you simply do it online after John sets up a, an option, or you send in a check, and you put in the memo line, you send a check to our church, Kinsley Park Church, and then you put in the memo line, assistance fund, and that's all you have to do. Barbara, you had a question? Yeah, um, I, first of all, I second Carol's comments. I think this is a great thing to be doing. I'm just wondering if there are conference guidelines or other congregations that are doing something like this that we've got so we're not um, necessarily totally inventing the wheel. Yes. Uh, in fact, much of what you see in the in the written document, I shouldn't say much, but it, it is our language, but it is it is taken from looking at many other assistance funds, uh, guidelines and documents. Um, you know, there are things in there about um, not giving to someone who wants to use the money for an illegal purpose, which may seem a little bit silly, but we, in looking at it, recognize that it's important to have that for IRS purposes and, and to um, just to sort of coverage. Um, so yes, we have looked at a number of others and this is large, this is based on many of those. Feedback or question? So I believe the order of business is to call for a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion to approve the assistance fund? So moved. So moved. Second. And second. So moved by Margaret for John's purposes and seconded by Christina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. The assistance fund is approved. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I have just, I have, I promise one more small agenda item. Um, <laughs> it is to say, well, just gracias <laughs> to, to the finance team. Um, I, 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 I particularly, I just want to, you know, John Tishy is is the backbone of the finance team. If he's in the room there, I think he is. Can we give him a round? Yeah. Of okay. uh, John not only does all of the sort of day-to-day, day-in and day-out stuff of, with our banking and keeping track of things, but he handles our technology um, and has made a number of improvements in our technology. Um, he was a, a big factor behind the assistance fund and pushing for that. Um, so many, many thanks to John. I couldn't do it without him. Uh, and, and Robert, our financial sector is fantastic as, as always. Um, Thank you, Robert. And Meg is just amazing. To your muchas gracias, I'll say de nada. And I just uh, wanted to recognize you, Don, because I've, I've been in this church longer than I like to think about. But uh, you, you've done a fantastic job as a treasurer. And uh, I appreciate it because I work with you, and I hope the and I know the rest of the congregation does too. Here, here. Four more years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. We'll see about that. Salute. Thank you, Don. Back to Michelle. Okay, moving on to Don Black on with the Board of Trustees and Capital Sampling Thanks, I look up so I'm not standing with my back to anybody. Um, Don, thank you so much. So uh, I'm going to send around a document for people to take a look at while I give out the campaign closeout report. And we're going to do a little bit of bridge conversation from what Don showed in the financial statements, which he showed a campaign summary table of about 775000 in cash that's been received, and about 680000 690000 cash out the door. I'm going to give you the bridge to how we're looking at the closeout because it involves a little bit more detail than that, so you have an understanding of what it is, and so we'll send this around. And while this goes around... And this, John, yes. um, just for those folks who have not been here for the past five years, I will do it. Yes. Absolutely. Give us the elevator. I will give you the elevator spiel, the pitch, yes, absolutely. So um, for uh, all of us, as a reminder, the capital campaign was approved in January of 2020, 75 days before everything shut down for COVID. It's a five-year campaign, capital campaign, um, known as the Second Century Campaign, renewing our foundation. And there was thematically a desire to widen our welcome to all members of the community. So there were specific elements of the campaign. Uh, the campaign itself had some building-related elements. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. It had a 10% mission tie. That was a big portion of it, and we've had that in the past when we've done campaigns, and obviously we have a mission tithing as part of, of our annual budget, uh, and, and it had a bunch of kind of really big ticket items, and the, the sexiest one, and I hate to do this to you all, um, while we just had a meal, was uh, we had a probably 100-year-old uh, sewage waste line downstairs that was backing up that needed to be replaced, and it was an enormous expense, as you can imagine, for a building this size. So, um, there were other things we did, and we'll get to that in, in a minute, but uh, five-year campaign, uh, um, approved in 2020, 70 plus days before things shut down, um, and uh, to echo on, on Don and others, people, uh, I have to start with thank you. Thank you to all of you, one, for being here tonight, but for your participation in the campaign. You know, it's uh, not easy to do these things over five years. Um, it was a long road. COVID uh, was not seen by any of us at the time, um, and we got through that in an amazing way, and actually made uh, lemonade out of lemons when the building closed, and actually accelerated a lot of work in the first couple of years. And we were able to do that in large part because people paid uh, some of their pledges either faster than they suggested or responded to the building being closed and said, let's get some of this work done. And so uh, big congrats to everybody uh, around that. My other thank yous that I'll do now rather than at the end are to my uh, fellow trustees who have been at this for a number of years with me. So um, on my left uh, is uh, Mary Jane Glass. I want to recognize Mary Jane, Edmund Frost, John Buchanan are here with us, and the last who's not here is Vanessa Andrews. And so that uh, small and mighty group. That small but mighty group has met more times than they care to want to. Whatever's in our bylaws that said it was quarterly, it wasn't quarterly, because we just had a lot of activity going on. So um, thank you to everybody. So uh, the document in front of you is going to be a bridge, again, from what uh, Donna shared with you, which is, in effect, a way to look at the cash in the campaign to how um, we as trustees potentially will close out the, the, this to the congregation. So the numbers are going to be a little bit different. Uh, and I'll go through why in a second. So we're going to start with the goals. There were two explicit goals. The first one was 100% participation from congregation members in the five-year campaign. Uh, we estimated that back in 2020 we would get 70 gifts. Uh, we ended up with 49 gifts. So we're about 70% of the way uh, to our goal there. So that was goal, goal number one. Goal number two was to raise, in effect, a million dollars. Uh, and that uh, obviously was to widen our welcome. The trustees are projecting revenue, which is different from cash, and I'll cover that in a minute, is projecting revenue over $900,000. That is a combination of the $775,000 of cash, roughly, that's been received to date. Plus, there are four outstanding pledges for the campaign. 
plus there is a small restricted grant for the accessibility grant. So the number you see on the table, which is a $900,000 number, the delta, that number to what was cash, what was paid in, what Don reported, that's the outstanding pledges plus the grant. We have no reason to believe right now that we won't receive the restricted grant or that the four people will not fulfill their pledge. The four people that filled their pledge, in fact, signed a pledge form. I've been in communications with them. Uh, my understanding is that they will pay it this year. And if something were to change, we will come back and tell you otherwise. But for the purposes of closing out the campaign, we're going to honor the fact that they made that commitment uh, and present that to you. So didn't get to a million dollars, but I just want to take a moment. 900 plus thousand in both cash and, and outstanding pledges is ridiculous for a congregation of this size. So I just want everyone to give it <laughs> a <laughs> So what did we what did we do with the month with the seven hundred plus thousand in cash and what's coming down the pipe? So you know I mentioned the waistline. Let's get that one out of the way. But the really things that are more noticeable to everyone: um, the HVAC piping, uh, a bunch of stuff down in the basement just to make the heating better. Uh, those of you who noticed, we have two uh, restrooms up on the first floor now. One of them handicap accessible. Um, really nice addition to the first floor and to the use of the building. Um, some may not know this, but in the basement where we leased the Kinder House, um, we have a new meeting room down there and we uh, modernized what was an old industrial kitchen into a modern pantry. And so we've actually picked up some meeting space downstairs. Then the two other big things that are left for us to cover is a 10% tie. And I'll get to that amount in a minute, what that will look like. And then obviously the building accessibility ramp which we'll spend some time on, on and updating on in a minute. But you know, when we started it back in 2020, um, we had done one campaign, I think, in the last 20 or 30 years back in 2004. I think we came close to about $700,000 of cash at that time and did a lot of work. But this was really something else to go this far. And so again, thank you for that. So uh, I'm going to go through the numbers quickly so we know how we did what we did and, and what we're presenting to you tonight. So the actual total number of pledges made, where we have a signed form, is $869,000. The actual pledge payments are roughly $735,000. So we have 100 plus, 140, $150,000 outstanding and four gifts. We had general contributions of about $40,000 with no pledge at all. These people uh, gave us money, which is really wonderful. Um, and then we were able to secure our small grant for the accessibility grant. So that, that gets us to the, the 900. On the other side, if you flip over on the page, and I apologize to people on, the, on Zoom, I'll, uh, I'll walk through the numbers. We have a projected expenses that we think are going to land right at 988,000. And I'll go through those uh, in, in detail. The first uh, number is there's roughly 680 and $690,000 that is out the door already for the projects that have already been completed. And that's the number you saw that Don shared with you on the campaign side. So that money is out the door already. We then have a 10% mission tie. And based on the figures, the projected revenue that the trustees have of roughly 900 plus thousand, we would make a $90,000 mission tie payment in 2024. And John, can I just do a quick, yeah. for, those, for, for new folks, yeah. um, our congregation has a commitment to tie 10% of all income the church receives. So 10% of all income the church receives, unless it's a restricted grant, is dedicated to mission and social action um, donations and spending, including Thank the capital campaign. You. Thank you, Ellen. So 680, 690 already out the door. We have another 90 for the tie. We have about $20,000 in architectural fees, plus or minus, left uh, on the drawings for the accessibility ramp. We have assumed, based on the architect's experience around the accessibility ramp, that it'll be about $40,000 more in construction than what we planned back in 2020. And that's a function of uh, time, inflation, and materials. Um, and that's a reasonable number based on what the, what the architect works with. And that includes, for those of you who ever want to go back and look at the documents, our original budget for the campaign had a ramp plus the parlor steps. And those were two elements for 140. And this is combined at 180, so the, the cost has gone about 40. If you think about it, we've had four full years, and one year we had inflation north of 9, 10%. So the costs have gone up in, in large part 
uh, for timing and inflation. And then the last thing we have is an expense um, that we've included um, is uh, we did not allocate um, in the 2020 uh, budget for the campaign any funds around landscaping um, once the ramp was built outside. And it was an issue that came up and we kind of said, we'll table it, we can come back to it at a later date. So we're coming back to it at a later date. We have an allocation of $15,000 in this. So that basically says once the ramp is constructed, there'll be some money available to be able to do landscaping around it, which was the plan all along. Um, we just didn't do it the first time through because, quite frankly, we were having difficulty even trying to get a number for the ramp. Yeah. And so that was five years ago, four plus years ago. So total expenses, 988. Total projected revenue, 912, 9 something. So we have a funding gap of about $76,000. And that assumes all of the pledges are paid. And that obviously is a big assumption. There are four outstanding gifts, uh, but that assumes that those come in. So. Um, we, the trustees, have talked about this, um, and we would like to make a recommendation to the congregation. Obviously, it's for congregation discussion and vote. Um, Don shared with you tonight the financial uh, health of the, the church. In my 25 years, the financial health has never been stronger. There's $274,000 in our operating account. There's over $400,000 plus or minus in our investments. Um, even within our investments, only the endowment, which is about 40,000 of that, is truly protected and restricted. The rest of the funds are available to us. So the church has 173,000 of campaign cash in its operating account, and then close to $360,000 of undesignated or unrestricted investments. So it's in a really good financial position right now, um, in part because of your generosity and also in part good stewardship around what we've spent over the last few years. So the trustees have been uh, up front, and we discussed this in 2020 at the annual meeting. There was always going to be a, a time and place where should we not raise the full million that we may want to use the investments to cover the priority items at the end. So the two priority items which have been discussed over the last 18 months are the mission tithe, obviously, which we're going to make at 10 percent um, and the accessibility. Rate. And so the recommendation we have for you tonight to, to share is literally to uh, allow, have the congregation allow the trustees to deploy some of the unrestricted investments of the church to ensure that the accessibility ramp is built. The second element of that recommendation was to use the undesignated fund within our investments. So we're not touching pastoral housing, we're not touching the endowment, and we're not touching contingency. We have uh, an allocation right now of $126,000. So, if everything worked out perfect in an ideal world, the four people pledge, we get the grant, we're $76,000 off, we have $126,000 in an undesignated fund that can cover that, and still leave us $50,000 left over. That, yeah. that assumes that the estimate for the ramp is... Yes, it assumes the estimate for the ramp is, is, is a good one, and I, on faith, have to believe the architect, who has built recent ones up at um, St. Albans, is saying it's going to come in at that, that dollar amount, plus or minus. And Don, just remind us, that estimate is how recent? Uh, it, within the last three months. Yeah. Like it literally, we had, when they got design development done, the first round of drawings for the ramp, we actually went out to a few contractors and they came in the kind of 125 to 180 range. And the architect said, given what we were doing, he said, just take 180 for what we're doing. Meaning it could be as low. Could, as could be lower, but. But right. for what yeah. we have to do to plan, what you know, my favor is to prepare yeah. So we'll we'll take one, we'll take one eight. Yeah, it should be twelve twenty four on the table. Yeah, yeah. That, that's done. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so long and short of it, ridiculous five years, raised a lot of cash, still have some outstanding commitments to fulfill. Um, have two things left to fund, which is the mission tie. Which we think is going to be 90, and the accessibility ramp, which we think is going to cost us about 180,000. And then I'll just leave you with: I'm happy to answer any questions. The the recommendation uh, obviously will need to be moved and then discussed. It's not an insignificant one for the trustees to ask uh, the congregation to use uh, investments, but we just think the uh, the accessibility ramp is such a priority that it needs to get done, um, and we're in a financial position. The last thing I'll share with you is, is that we've had appreciated stock value in the investments, probably north of thirty to forty thousand dollars alone this year. And so, if there was ever a time to pull some money out of the investments for a priority need, 
this would be the year to do it. So I'll stop there to see if anyone has questions or things to add. Are these things like the window replacements? They are just not going to be done. So um, when we got into the first two years, Mary Jane, the environmental section of the <coughs> windows, which were largely things that could come through repairs and maintenance also, mm -hmm. we made that recommendation to table those, particularly when we went with the first two. So, um, I'm just Mary, thinking about the ones along there that actually parts of the window have fallen onto the ground. So the, there, there are. So there's a couple things right now. If, if there's anything that's going on right now related to buildings and grounds, there's seventy-five thousands of contingency fund right now that the council and the trustees can work on the fix immediately. Okay. So that's. I don't want to minimize that there won't be other things in that hundred-year-old building. There will be other things. You can count on. Yeah, Edmund and then Robert. I'd like to say that the trustee, principally Don, has done a really diligent and excellent job of scoping out the costs and the uh, looking for contractors, architects and contractors to the ramp. And I think we're in a very good position to bring that home for uh, within what Don has estimated. Thank you. Appreciate that. Robert. Hi, Don. Uh, I just want to clarify, make, make sure, not really clarify, but make sure people understand these numbers. Um, when you say that uh, they're in, they've raised the actual result is north of $900,000, as you and I discussed, the only way you arrive at that is to consider pledges as actual income. So in your calculations down here, financial summary under sure. actual, yes. where you say pledges, yes. you count that as revenue. Yes. And you, as you explained to me, that that's commonly done in uh, fundraising campaigns. However, in our, in Don Marshall's report, he put the income from the campaign at 774,000, not 900 and something, yep. which means that that's 75% of the goal. Now, so, in, I've been involved in this in a while, and, and we have never considered pledges as revenue. Even though I'm not, I take your, your, you're the professional in this, so obviously I defer. But it's not the way it's been done in this church, and it's not the way it's done in Don's financial report. So that, uh, and by, frankly, I think the way Don has done it is the way. We've always done it the way we should do it. Uh, when we get annual pledges, we don't consider that an income. We consider that money that's been promised to come up, to, to come in in the coming year, and we base our budget on it. And just to give you kind of a corny example, if you tell me that you're going to give me $100 next month, I'm going to say thank you, but I can't spend that money until you actually put it in my hands. And I think that's the way we should approach this. I don't think we should consider that we've taken in $869,000 just because people have pledged that amount. One amendment to what you said is, I think the campaign actually started in 2018, not 2020. And uh, it, it was approved in 2020. We planned in 2019. We, we did some quiet fundraising planned. It, it was formally approved at the January 2020. Uh, well, the five-year yeah. campaign runs from January 1st, 2018 to December 31st of this year. So the, the five-year campaign ended this year. And, of course, we've extended it to take in some last, some uh, late campaign uh, contributions. Robert, just a, a small amendment to that. January 1st, 2019. It was 2019, 20, 21, Yes. Five full calendar year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. I don't want to go below over that. Yeah. So I, I just let's have a conversation about the the treatment issue because um, Robert and I had a chance to talk yesterday. We have a disagreement, um, and we know each other for a really long time. I'm respectful of Robert's opinion. I believe Robert is respectful of mine. In my world, in the time that I've been here which includes being a moderator, a treasurer, and now serving on the trustees, when individuals sign a pledge form and say they're going to give money, we basically have to take them at face value that they're going to get those funds. 
We just approved. We just approved an operating budget for this year for 2020, to which I bet you less than five thousand dollars has actually been contributed so far. So we do count pledges and sign forms to take action in this church. We just did so to approve the budget. I think there's a fair question, notwithstanding the esoterics about how we should record revenue versus income. And I would tell you what Don reports and what he reported on the campaign is cash and not income. Cash is different. Revenue and projected expenses are different. We're not going to do an accounting or finance course tonight. <laughs> but Robert's point around will we receive these is a valid one. That is valid. And the issue I would share with you is assume none of the four gifts come in. Nothing comes in. We still have enough money to do the tithe and the accessibility. There's $173,000 of cash in our operating account. And there's 126,000 in the undesignated. There's $300,000 not associated with pastoral housing, the endowment, or the, or the contingency fund. We have $300,000. We have more than enough money to do this. And so, notwithstanding the disagreement that Robert and I will probably share till our last days on the earth, <laughs> um, as a trustee, as a trustee, I feel very confident in saying that I can support. This recommendation because we have the financial wherewithal to do it number one and number two it has been a congregational priority for over four plus years now and many people had actually given money to make sure that it happens and so as a trustee i have to go with the will of the congregation others can have different views and should we take action tonight on the trustees recommendation people should hold their conscience Dr. I, I just want to make sure i understand what i would say to be my last comment uh, it's not, a, it's not a semantical thing exactly. You know, you're, I don't think that we can tell the congregation in one report that we've raised, as Don Marshall has done, that we've raised $772,000. And then in your report, wait a minute, say that you've raised $900,000. That's just confusing. Well, so in fact, my would contend, and I won't say anything more after this one if you want me to, that we haven't reached 91% of the goal, we've reached 75% of the goal, which is great, but it's not 91%. I, I have, and Robert and I had the chance to go through this yesterday, we won't bore you with the back and forth, but on a cash basis, Robert's right. We have $774,000, $775,000 in the door, which would say we're at 77% of the goal. It ignores the fact that we have four pledges committed and we have a restricted grant. And I don't know how, in my role as a trustee, that I would come to you and say, well, before that pledge and said they're going to pay, to which we've had conversations with, and they have committed to paying, and the restricted grant coming in is not part of what we share as what we raised. Well, it's, we not raised cash. Yeah, we're it's not cash. It's not cash. And we, they're not four. They're, there's four. There's one 40,000, another 40,000, and another 75,000 that are not in free. I'm not aware of four. There are and four. What's the there are four. Okay, the other one. 75, 35, 30, 15. Yeah. Robert, I went through this with you. So we're not going to share 15. Yeah. Let's, let's start here and then go around. Christina. Yeah, I would just say two things. Number one, I like to think your reasoning makes sense. And I understand, I'm not an accountant, but I understand the difference in what's pledged. And like we're talking about gifts, and you've obviously been in contact with people. I understand the difference. I don't have a problem with it. I also want to say, like, as just as a disabled person, like, this grant is so, so important because, like, when we talk about, like, Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. That can't be true unless people can physically get in the church. So I think it's an absolutely fantastic use of investment. We'll go around the horn, Lee. You had your hand up. Do you want to? No. Are you good? Oh, okay. So I was just going to say, to me, a pledge is like an IOU, and an IOU is like the, the check that you haven't cashed yet. And, you're right, someone could renege on that IOU, but you can't say it doesn't exist. It's money that that you believe is coming in because someone has signed a promise to the church that they're going to get that money. And I have understood that there's some people that are worried that the that people aren't going to build the ramp, and so they're kind of holding on to their pledges until they're sure that the ramp is going to be built. So I don't know if that's true or not, but 
I certainly know that, that I, the pledge that came from our family was definitely, the ramp was my number one. So to me, it's so important to bringing people into church. My, I have family members that won't be able to come in church without a ramp. So I, I think it is a really important thing. And I can agree that Robert is raising questions about financial presentations, but I, if he were saying that we should not build the ramp, I would strongly disagree. But I didn't say he didn't say that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then so yeah. we're going to build the ramp. No, I definitely didn't say that. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go, uh, Deb, and then Al. We want to go both Al and Deb. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the estimate of the ramp. I think you said that you still owe the architect twenty thousand. Sure. And that the estimate came from the architect. The estimate for the ramp. So we've got two buckets of expenses. We've got architectural fees and the construction. The construction has been moved from it was a line item of one hundred and forty thousand in the original campaign budget, which was the ramp plus the renovation of the borrow steps. That was 140. We've moved that up to 180 based on the information that the architect gave us this fall. So, and he hasn't yet finished his work. So, you don't have it in writing yet? What in writing? The estimate for the cost of the ramp. The ramp cost will be done when we put it out to bid. So, by we'll know that number that. By yeah, the by the contractor. Yeah, but and it could come in higher, it could come in lower. So, the architect is done estimating, and you're thinking it's going to be top 180. That's what he's telling us. And so, none of the trustees or architects are, and so we, we've got to go with the info with him. One more question. Sure. I think I remember from the past trustees that you're prepared to spend more for the ramp, up to 225. Is that correct? Uh, the trustees don't have the authority to spend more. The trustees can only come to the church with the recommendations about how to use investments. That's why we're here tonight. And for purposes of discussion, I think what I heard at one of the past meetings was if the price goes above 225, you're not going to do it. So, what the trustees discussed, since Alan is a regular <laughs> participant, the trustees discussed the fact that at 180 at construction, 30,000 potentially in architect fees and permitting. We're now getting at a number that the trustees were uncomfortable. We're starting to get to be a lot higher than where we were originally. So there was some thought process that if the construction came in, the fees are set to the architect. So they're going to be somewhere between 22 and 28,000. We have a signed contract with the architect, they're delivering seven drawings. The construction cost is the variable cost, but the trustees absolutely. The trustees have no intention of you know turning around and outlaying two hundred fifty thousand dollars when they don't have authority from the publication to do it. I think I remember the figure two twenty five. It's all two twenty five all in with, with, the, that, with the fees with the architect fees. Beyond yes. that, you are considering a contingency plan, are you not? That does not involve the ramp. If you uh, were to go above that, you have a contingency plan. For another way to get people up to that front door. No, I think no. the idea is they would have to come back to the congregation. No, we'd have to come back. Yeah. So, so I'll there just is no contingency. Plan. There's no other contingency. All right. If the if the ramp comes in and we put it out the bid this spring, and let me just get all the details out. The architect believes that the final draft construction drawings will be done at the end of February. There'll be a short period of review. We're getting help from Deb Niemeyer and her class at University of Maryland. Thank you, Deb, uh, to review it. We'll put that out for permitting probably in the April, May, June period if we're fortunate. And if everything goes well, we'll try to do the contracting this summer and try to build. We're, last year, we thought we might be able to do it in the springtime. There's just no way it's going to happen. It'll be summer at the earliest. So, so the just, permitting, if it begins in April, might last until June? Easily. Yeah, it's the district's process. What if the, we permitting, control what if the permitting begins in June? Then you would begin in September? Yeah. I mean, this is all, I mean, from a gating perspective, we can only do so much and then we need regulatory approval to do this. Last question. Sure. What takes three months on the permit? Why is it three months? Uh, anybody who has an answer, please tell me the distance. I don't know. 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 So there's actually in the process, there are multiple, there are multiple <laughs> sets of drawings that compile the aggregate construction documents. <laughs> No, you have a hand over here. Yeah, so the, but the, the reason it takes so long is there are multiple sections within the regulatory agency that has to look at each section 
And then they pull everything back and together. What is the name of that regulatory? Uh, it was the ECRA. I don't know who it is. It's it's the Thank you. There was a question or comment. Sorry. Well, yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of things. First of all, I second what Christina said. It is critical to why we are welcome. And I think I think the conversation is behind the accessibility of ramps and provide. I also trust our trustees to come back to us if the situation ever changes. Um, I'm on the board of another nonprofit here in town. What we're being told about the estimates is completely in line with what I'm hearing from working on a capital campaign at other organizations. And we are really fortunate to have this kind of leadership. Amen. Um, so if it's not premature, I would like to move that we accept the recommendation of the trustee. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Folks, I'm yes. sorry. I had. Can I? Sorry. <laughs> the motion carries. The motion carries. You're going to want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> uh, so if I could. Uh, just have, I have a question and then a, and just a, a comment or two. One, John, um, my understanding or you know, from the information I gave you and from what you've told me, that you're saying there's a funding gap of about 55,000? I think, I think when we uh, reconciled everything, it ended up being 76. Yeah, okay, that's, okay that's, thanks for that clarification. Yeah. The, the, the general fund, as I reported before, currently holds about 91,000 in capital campaign funds. Those are funds that have been transferred from our investments to the general fund. So is it your understanding that assuming that funding gap remains about that amount, we wouldn't actually have to draw down our investment funds any further? We would simply uh, use from, from a From a cash perspective, I think this is a timing question, Don, about how we move money. Um, and I say this because having $274,000 as a trustee sitting in an overnight bank account is not the best and highest use of money. So I think some desire to move those funds into the investments and make sure they're balanced so that they're earning something. Um, and then the, the dynamic about outflow, the outflows for the construction of the ramp will be summer or early fall, right? That's when that will hit. And then the other big expense is the mission time. And that is functionally, I don't believe we're gonna make that in the next month. And so I think there's a cash management issue, Don, where we should talk through what should sit and then um, you also have a cash balance from the surplus this year. So there's probably a larger question with the trustees about how much cash should stay in the church's operating account and how much should migrate over to the investments. Yeah. That makes sense. That, that's, that's what I wanted to, to get at um, because there, this gets a little complicated when it, we start to, you know, look at the Absolutely. cash flow yeah. purposes. But, but I just wanted to also make the point that we have, those funds do exist in the account and to remind folks of that. So we're not talking about potentially a significant drawdown depending on the timing of how we do this. The other, um, the other point just that, um, and it sounds like we've already approved this, so maybe it's a, a not a point uh, anymore, um, but um, you know, Robert raises a good point. This is not cash in hand. And unlike our general year to year budget, We've had decades of knowing that people are going to come through on those pledges, and we have we we just we know that we don't have that same understanding with the capital campaign. That said, ask the question of Don, and he's had many conversations, and I'm very confident that that funding will come in. Uh, and Don knows it better than anyone else. Uh, and even if it's not a hundred percent, it's going to be very close, in my opinion, um, to the extent that. Anyone doesn't think it will come in, it just goes back to the question, would you support this even if that money doesn't come in? And, and to, so we have the funds to do it. Um, and so I would support it and I do support it. And I'll leave it at that. And it passed. Yes. <laughs> Don't go anywhere quite yet. Yes. Before we move on, I would just like to note that when we approve the officers, we vote the officers for next year. Don is our outgoing chairman of the board of trustees, so I would really like to thank him for his incredible amount of work he's put in.
did this morning during church. Um, this is not Don's first gig. He has actually chaired two capital campaigns, which no one should ever. There won't be a third. Right. I'm just telling you right now. It's not happening. And he is stepping down as the chair of our board of trustees. And um, I just, we are all incredibly grateful for the amount of work you have done. Gossip. <laughs> and we are still on track to be done by eight. Right, so. so we're also grateful for the Spanish wine and tea. Yes. 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 Well, you can even say they are Don Don. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, time for the pastor's report. Oh, I, I'm not going to hold this up. Um, I will say very, very briefly that um, you can read my pastor's report. Okay, it's in the, it's in the annual report. Um, the highlights are um, that I think that we should do this type of thing as often as possible. Meaning, Zoom is a great um, technology to be able to use um, when we want to have a finance team meeting at 5 p.m. on a Monday. It's awesome. But when we want to do something like this, or we want to get together for our aging gracefully and gratefully tea once a month. It is so amazing to be able to meet in person. And so I think that just really encouraging ourselves to get together in the flesh as often as possible is a really wonderful thing. Um, again, being so grateful that people who can't can zoom in from Mexico in their bedrooms and etc. Um, in addition, I just also want to say that um, I have been wanting to do an actual leadership retreat for how long have I been here? It's 2024, 20, almost 13 years. And um, usually we start kind of cramming the leadership orientation 45 minutes that Dan helps me lead in our council meeting in March. But this year I have managed to get the council and trustees to agree to meet for four hours. <laughs> and um, I'm just really looking forward to that because honestly, when we come together and actually take some time to meet and socialize and share a meal and be able to talk about things that are meaningful to us in the life of our church, it makes a difference in the future of this congregation. So thank you all for agreeing to do that and for coming out tonight, and that's all I got. Is there any other church business? No, we have to elect the slate. That's the next item on the agenda, but I was just checking. Oh, oh, right. Move on. Okay. Uh, moving on to nomination of an election of officers for 2024. You can see the whole slate in here. Um, I'd like to thank Lisa Jenkins for stepping into the role of moderator, Maggie Miklo for stepping up as vice moderator, and to Mark Turner for taking over as chair. The board of trustees is an important um, new positions, and of course, everybody else who's either continuing on the council or will be taking on new leadership roles on the council. And can I just say one thing about um, Trish McKenzie is stepping down as fellowship chair, and um, Christina and Sarah are stepping up as co chairs um, in her place. Um, Trish is not here tonight, even online, because she currently has her daughter and her daughter's twin three year old living with her. And um, because her daughter is on a schedule um, for a job that is based in a Muslim country, um, her daughter works on Sundays. And so Trish is with those three-year-olds all day on Sunday. So not only should I, not only do I want to ask you to hold Trish in your prayers, for obvious reasons, um, but also just so much gratitude for all that she has given um, to our congregation. And, and she'll continue to be a part of us. But just, you know, she's a little limited right now in her ability to be here in person. Um, she has given so much to our congregation over the years. She's an incredible lay leader. I will miss her on the council as much as I'm so glad to have Christina and Sarah um, join us on the council. And I wish you were here in person or even on Zoom, but I just really wanted to lift her up as um, somebody that, you know, has done an amazing job and that I, I really treasure. <laughs> I just want to note that on the list of committees and so forth, the leadership team includes Don Blanchett as chair of the trustees. So 
<laughs> so he's going to have to do it another year. Uh, yeah, the update yeah. doesn't. I, I gave an update that doesn't. But it's right. <laughs> yeah. Amendment from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that on page 19. No, I'm just going to check. Oh, I'm not going to check. Oh, it's right in the list of trustees for wrong and the list of leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just okay. saying. The slate on page 19 is what we're talking about. That should be the correct list. Is there a motion to approve the slate of candidates for 2024? So moved. Don is first and Serena is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Welcome to all of our new incoming. With that, I really don't have any closing remarks anymore that I had opening remarks. Dorothy. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if anyone has mentioned this before, but I just want to make sure we always remember that the piano in the sanctuary is, is Dan Stokes' piano. Yeah. Uh, he bought it uh, for himself, I guess, back in in the 90s, and he has graciously allowed the church to use it now for well over 25 years. And I just always want that to Thank be you. in our records every year. Yes. That uh, it was an incredibly Incredible. generous gift which has allowed the church oh, yeah. to host many, yes. many fundraisers. And John, were you able to hear that? Oh, yeah, yeah. John, were you, did you hear any of that from Dorothy? Pardon? Okay, just want to make sure John got that for the minute. And before you hand off that gavel okay. to our incoming moderator, <laughs> um, I just say on behalf of the council how grateful we are for all of your work as moderator this year. Um, it's a a big, though you would say doable, right? <laughs> doable, it's not a scary job, okay? Um, it's a big and doable job, and you did it wonderfully, and thank you so much. Oh, Thank you. Oh, you forgot me if you died. <laughs> uh, Lisa, the new moderator. I a wonderful staff, wonderful trustees, wonderful finance team, chairs of committees, committees, people who help on the Sundays. And it really is not an intimidating job. In fact, I have often said that there's more work involved with being on the finance team, for instance. So I hope that um, later this year, when you may be approached to become moderator, as well as the rights moderator first, that you will consider it. And um, I think we're bumping up against our time, and I know people probably want to rush home to see the football scores. <laughs> so um, unless there's other business, maybe we have a motion to adjourn. Moved. <laughs> <laughs> a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye.